Um, thank you all for joining um, the presentation on delivering digital transformation projects using um, modern Microsoft type tools, uh, sorry, modern project management type tools. So I've got to run through a few slides I've been told to from the sponsors. Uh, so sponsors, the, the, so the, the presentation has been uh, put together in association with Tech Nation, West Midlands Growth and the Department for International Trade. Um, sponsors, headline sponsors, NatWest, Copper, whoever they are, Culture Group, BJJ, SS and Sidetrade and BMET. Interestingly, BMET is one of our former projects that we implemented a digital transformation through for, for on a Unicor ERP solution, um, which we can talk about later. Um, and I believe there's other sponsors that we need to talk about as well. So that's great. Um, Sorry, my Zoom session is telling me to do other things. I admit people. Yeah, I'll, I'll handle yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah, if you don't mind, because it's just taking up my slides. Um, okay, so so we're Myriad Consulting, and uh, we uh, we work to, we predominantly implement uh, finance systems, um, which is part of our digital transformation offering. So we've been in existence now since 2003. Um, we work out of Birmingham area, uh, or sorry, based in the Birmingham area, but we deliver projects across the globe. Um, so there's a team of 20 of us uh, working across sort of projects um, across sectors, um, mainly, find, uh, mainly local government, higher education, not-for-profit and commercial organizations as well. So what we want to talk about is delivering pro delivering or well, practical project management techniques. So I'm a project manager. Um, I've been working in uh, delivering projects for, for many years now. So it's a bit about me, uh, qualified accountant, uh, holder of an MBA from the Henley Management College. I have 20 years plus experience at delivering, implementing and delivering digital ERP transformation projects. I directly manage a team of 20 people within my organization who work across projects. But again, uh, uh, depending on who the organization is, we also deliver projects on behalf of um, large professional services organizations. So we could have, a, we could have at our disposal up to about 80 or 90 consultants. Um, our projects range from about the five million pounds turnover to 30 million pound um, sort of value. Um, so yeah, so a lot of sleepless nights delivering some of these big projects for, um, for a lot of our customers. So, I want to talk through the typical project manager's toolkit. So, this is in before projects sort of come to us, there is a sort of huge sales cycle. Uh, an organization will go out and sell a digital transformation projects, um, be that software, be that services, consultancy. And then, once, once all that's done, once this, the champagne has been set, it's handed over to the project manager to actually do his or her best to, to deliver a project. Now, from an admin perspective, the tools we sort of typically have is a Gantt chart, which is normally delivered through Microsoft Project. So it's tried and tested tools. We have some kind of a resource scheduling tool. Um, so we know what the project is, we know what we've got to deliver, we know when we're gonna deliver it by. Uh, then we've got to find the right people who are available to at our disposal, uh, right, right people, right skills, availability to deliver the project. Then we need to track those people. So we need some kind of time and expense management system. So that will then ensure that those people are allocated to our project are tracking the time and expense, which we can then either transfer onto the customer or, or absorb as part of our sort of fixed cost. And then we need some kind of a tool which goes through and records the project costs um, and project um, sort of getting the income out to the customer. So traditionally uh, in a lot of projects I've worked on or a lot of projects, a lot of my sort of, um, uh, my, my, um, my cohort worked on, we end up using a combination of a lot of these tools. So we use Excel, Microsoft Project, uh, some kind of resource scheduling tool, some kind of time and expense management tool. Um, so from an administration perspective, it it's, can be cumbersome, 
we sometimes have to employ a PMO officer just to sort of take a look. So, uh, sorry, sorry, can somebody put themselves on mute? That's okay. Uh, so we end up having to use some kind of a, uh, sometimes having to employ PMO officers to actually bring a lot of this, bring a lot of this coordination together, which is another admin sort of burden. And also a lot of just all this tracking and recording of time actually deters the project manager from doing their job, which is delivering successful outcomes. So what I want to talk to you about today is what? that we've been using more and more yeah. um, called PSA. Um, and my, com my colleague, Thomas Sonish, and Sonish, who's actually on the call with us today, is going to go through and demonstrate how the PSA tool can be used. Um, yeah, to... just about, I've got a talk I should be attending, playing in the background. Sorry, can someone put themselves on mute? Um, so Thomas is going to go through and demonstrate a time and a, a tool, that, a, a single unit You've put yourself on mute now. See that. Hold on a second, everyone. Sorry. My bell. Sorry about that. So I'm not on mute anymore. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. Yep. Um, I'll, Thomas, I'll take over when, when you start your presentation. <laughs> So, so what we'll talk, what we want to demonstrate actually is a tool that we've been working with for a while now um, called um, PSA, um, which is a sort of, uh, can be used to sort of term as a professional services automation tool. It's got a lot of, it's multifaceted, but from the, from our perspective, what it's allowed us to do and from a, from delivering projects is, it's allowed us to do sort of time and expense tracking, um, it's allowed us to do um, resource allocation, project management sort of tracking, um, and actually sort of costing the billing as well, all through a single platform, all delivered over a, over a Microsoft sort of form as well, which is, um, has been revolutionary for us. Um, so we've delivered two projects so far using this, and we've got a few other projects coming the offering from the new year. So we're, we're carving, if you like, we're, we're sort of sharpening our delivery on this and, and using PSA more and more, but it definitely is the way to go. And it really has been a game changer from us to get away from Microsoft Project, get away from Excel and getting away from sort of lots of offline forms. So I'm gonna hand over to Thomas now, who's gonna do a bit of a, a demonstration using a, um, uh, using a sort of a, a non, uh, a, a generic sort of solution that we got. So, Thomas, over to you. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Appel. Hopefully, you can all hear me. Um, and my apologies, I'm not that familiar with uh, with with Zoom. Um, so, I think just be, before I, before I share my screen and and uh, and move over to the actual demonstration, I think I just want to give a little bit of a high level overview of what uh, 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 Unit Four PSA is and the concept and vision behind the actual solution that that we that we've developed. Now, um, to start off with, it, it's, it's, a, it's a single solution. It's, it sits within the uh, Dynamics 365 customer relationship management uh, uh, tool. So in other words, it sits on the, uh, if, if you think with it, within an organization, it sits within the operational uh, uh, side of, of, an of an organization. Um, as a single tool, it manages the whole process. Uh, sorry, Hapal, can you just go back to that? Uh, sorry, yeah. yeah. It manages the whole process from a, a, a from a sales from a sales cycle aspect, so quality relationship management, marketing, client onboarding, for example, which is extremely extremely uh, uh, important within the accountancy firms. Um, you know, addressing issues like uh, uh, anti-money laundering, for example, and making sure that the the clients that you are onboarding are actually compliant with regards to your uh, the statutory requirements with, with, with within the countries. Um, uh, you know, and then managing that whole what we refer to from from funnel to cash. So, in other words, when you when you're running a sales cycle and you're bidding for projects. 
uh, you bid on the projects, you, you're able to look at what you've, what your historic projects look like. Um, you're able to, uh, uh, in, in the sales cycle, start predicting what type of resources you actually need for, uh, for the opportunity if you manage to win the opportunity. And you can start looking at the, the, uh, the cost comparisons and the potential profits of the, of, you know, of the projects as well. Um, once you've once you've landed the deal, as, as uh, you know, and and you've popped the champagne, as as Harpel mentioned to earlier, um, you know, it then it then goes into the actual practice management side. So in other words, how do we manage the actual project? How do we set the project up? How do we uh, um, um, uh, uh, make sure that the, that there's there's a uh, that there's there's the, the health of the project is in place, that you're sticking to budget, that you're using the correct resources, et cetera. Um, so our solution, the Unit 4 PSA solution, really you know, it manages that whole side all the way down to time and expense, um, um, able, you know, able to, to send uh, invoices and track the invoices and, and track the invoices, whether they're actually paid uh, within one single solution. Um, and then the great thing about the solution as well is, is, is that it's, it's, it's ERP independent. Uh, so it's finance solution independent. So as opposed to going and having a finance discussion with an organization and going out and ha having to do a full uh, uh, open heart uh, uh, transplant, uh, you know, we, we, we really deal with the, the operational side. Um, there's also the full human capital management component of it as well. So in other words, from a resource point of view, you know, what do you actually, uh, um, what, do you, what type of resource to, to, do, you, do you need for, for the organ, you know, for the, uh, the projects. Uh, and what we've really done from our side is, is that we're leveraging all of the various elements around the Microsoft Power Platform. Uh, yeah, just go back to that. PSA. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the Microsoft Power Platforms, in other words, you're able to leverage the Power BI uh, capabilities to get full reporting capabilities of your, of your projects. And really, it's about to, it's being able to offer a solution to the market, which Harpel has def definitely seen the advantage of within their organization is to, is to ad adapt a, a solution which is standardized uh, and, and, uh, and, and the, the process have been simplified. So in other words, allowing your, your users to be able to just go off and, and do the work that they, they need to do. Um, the solution is 100% cloud-based, so you have an anytime, anywhere access. Um, and it's, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, fully integrated into the Microsoft Plow, uh, Power Platform. Okay. So, so I think Thomas, gonna, we need to show them the product now, don't we? Yeah, hundred percent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just just confirm that you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So what we really have here is that now I'm starting off with 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 Outlook. Uh, I'm sure if, uh, a lot of you are familiar with uh, if you use the 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 productivity tools from Microsoft. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, this this Outlook view that we've got. Um, we've integrated our solution into Outlook as well. So from, from a click away, or you can track emails directly into our PSA solution. So for example, here, uh, you can start getting information, you know, how is this specific email, how is it related to, to your business? Well, it's actually related to the specific project that we've got here. You can click directly from here and go directly further into the project and get more, and, uh, more, more details. But what I'm wanting to do is actually just to show you here that you, you have one single interface where you're able to access all the information that you need. Now, I'm going to launch directly into our project management solution. Um, when called PSA Suite, when you log into the solution, you are you logged in as uh, I'm currently logged in as a full user. You can see that, which I'm logged in as the project manager role. Um, and here you can see I'm presented with a, with a dashboard. We have standardized dashboards that we deliver with our solution. Um, um, and this is this is dashboards which are relevant to the project manager. Uh, before I go any further, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of the, the landscape that we're looking at here. So on the left-hand side, we have the navigation bar. 
Now, these are all the modules which we use from a PSA point of view and from a project management aspect to, to manage your projects. So in other words, from creating the projects, looking at the dashboards, looking at the various employees, looking at your utilization sheets, time sheets, expenses, and, and uh, 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 PM approvals. The top section over here is what we refer to our, our um, uh, a, a, a control bar. From here, you're able to create quick projects if need be. So I can click on here, create a quick project. Um, earlier, I mentioned, I mentioned that the solution is standardized and, and simplified. So we have a standardized templates that have been pre-built uh, on um, uh, industry best practice. So the sub verticals that we focus in on is our IT industries, for example, accountancy practices, uh, consultancy firms, engineers, architects. So here, for example, I'm just gonna quickly type one um, and you can see, sorry. Uh, not can we? There we go. The, uh, sorry, the ten, I'm not in. The, I'm in the wrong one. There. there, for example, that there, for example, is a is a predefined template. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, so when you create that, when you create a new project, all depending on the type of industry that you've got, and this was really relevant for Myriad, is that we had predefined templates which they had, which they could just ad, uh, adjust. Uh, from their business processes to, to our uh, uh, best of practice uh, business processes. So I'm not going to save the change there. As I mentioned earlier, this is the project management role. Um, you have the em employee role. You can see here, this is the, uh, this is a time and expense user. You can see that the information is quite limited. The, 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 the uh, navigation bar down the side is, is limited. This is really just for time and expense users. Um, the great thing about this is that the dashboards um, are, are, you can drill down into the dashboards uh, because it's a cloud-based solution. Any of the data that you see here is basically, it's, it is live. So in other words, I always say, what, you know, what the left hand does, the right hand knows about immediately. So I can start drilling down into all these various projects, see the specific invoices. If I wanted to, I could carry on uh, uh, drilling down further. But for the, you know, for the, for the essence of this, uh, uh, um, this demonstration, I'm not going to. So, what I want to do now is just go back to the project project manager role. Um, I've got a predefined project that I've already created. So when I click onto my project, I get a full overview of what this project is about. I get I can have a look at the team and the hour types. Who are the, my specific team members that are associated? I can quite easily add more team members to this. Everywhere where you see the hand, I can start drilling down a little bit further into the actual solution. I get a full 360 degree view of what has, what's happening from a from a finance point of view of my of my uh, uh, of this specific project, so I can see if there's uh, um, what you know what invoices have been paid, what has not been paid, uh, because we don't have our demo demo environment linked to a financial solution. Obviously, there'll be no invoices that are paid here, but you, you can start, I mean, you can get an idea of, 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 of that full capabil uh, capabilities. Um, here you can see the, the sub steps, if you want to call it, um, of the projects, the, the, the predefined templates that, that, we've, that we've created for the solution. So this specific uh, project that we, that we have got running for this demo, these are the sub steps which are uh, associated to that specific project. I can have a look at the invoices, whole lot of various information that's available to me here. And what's what's great as well is that, you know, uh, um, Pal spoke about the using various, you know, four different type of tools. The one is the resource planning tool. Then you use you using a, a, a Microsoft projects uh, uh, for for your for your Gantt charts, etc. We have all of that. In one single uh, in one single solution, so I can have a look at my Gantt chart for this specific project, and I can see exactly what is, uh, um, you know, what is is the break what is the breakdown of of 
of the uh, um, or what the specific grand chart looks like. I can go in and I can move various things. I can change the various elements around it as well. It's you know it's it's, it's fully adaptable and live. Uh, so you can start having a full overview exactly of what are the, what are the various steps. I can see who's associated to that specific uh, uh, um, task within that uh, with with within the project as well. So at any given stage, I have a full overview. I can see the uh, performance reports. I can see the budgets that are actually associated to my uh, to my project. Um, I can go and I can change a whole lot of various elements is here as well. Um, so for example, on my budget here as well. Okay. Um, I can decide if I need to increase certain things. So for example, I want to make this 250. Um, it's quite easy for me to change. And when I save, um, normally it saves in the background, but from a demo point of view, I'm just going to change here. I'm sorry, I didn't manage to get that through. Um, there we go. Um, you know, it's, the solution is dynamic and, would f and, and the minute you change something here, it changes all the elements and it changes the rest of the, 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 rest of the information and the data of the specific project as well. So extremely flexible, extremely dynamic. Um, because it's cloud-based, you can access this via, via any uh, uh, um, uh, application that has got internet access or that has a mobile browser. We do also have a, uh, a, a mobile app for it as well. Okay, so if we just go back to the straight, I'm going to go back to the summary, and I'm going to move a little bit down over here. You know, from a utilization sheet was one of the uh, um, the aspects that Hoppel spoke about as well, and something which he finds extremely powerful within his organization is that you can get. I'm just going to retrieve my data quickly. Um, you can get an overview of all your tip, your 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 staff members their specific roles within the organization. And you can see how here, now there's not a lot of data here from a demo point of view, but you can see how they're actually being utilized and where is, you know, if there's actually space available for them to, uh, uh, from a project uh, um, uh, resource aspect. So here it's quite easy to able to, to go through and, and, and associate people to a specific parts of, of a project. Um, from a timesheet point of view, um, very easy to actually manage. Uh, I've created one. Um, any, if you see here, there's two different colors at the bottom. There's a blue and a green. It's very easy to create to, to add time. You basically click and drag. You associate it to your most recent uh, project that you're running. You associate the type of hours that's going to be used. Um, if you have any expenses, uh, predefined expenses that you want to link to the specific uh, uh, hour that you've, that you've used, so for example, travel, um, you, can add, you can attach that as well. I'm not going to add that for now. And let's say, for example, you have a recurring task for a project. It's very easy to just actually paste this through. So Harpel found this very valuable from when he was looking at his the last two projects that he's just completed because there's some re recurring tasks so you run this through your time plan through your time sheet you know what the hours are you can move it um, and it keeps all the base data behind now i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with uh, um, with working in outlook it's uh, it's an area that we that 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 is uh, it becomes our, uh, our our main working area from a calendar aspect What's great thing about our uh, application and really leveraging that whole Microsoft uh, environment is that we have an Outlook retrieval. So when I press the Outlook retrieval here, it goes and it takes my data, obviously things that I need to, uh, I need a lot of focus time between seven and nine, but it takes my data from or, or my, my meetings from my Outlook environment or my Outlook calendar environment and places it into my time and expense. If I want to, I can then now take this and add this to a specific project that I worked on. Now it changes the color. So from a pure uh, a visual aspect, the gray area is, just, is, a, is my Outlook diary. The blue is the one that's not been approved. And I'll show you now when we do time and approval, how th these then change to, uh, uh, to green. 
No, I think just from a from a time aspect, Harpel, I'm going to move straight over to the. Uh, yeah, that's right. But I mean, this is just this is just another example. I mean, yep. again, it's trying to get the whole of the project management suite in one box. That's what we're trying to get. So, so we found some resources. We we put a project on there. We put a Gantt chart on there. People can put their time and expense in one box. And again, there's nothing being like this up until now. So, from a administration of a project. Uh, we've had a lot of moving parts up until now, even sort of mm. you know, um, where we've had projects of, where we're sort of having sort of 25, 30 consultants working on projects and having to deal with people using uh, bits of spreadsheets, bits of a resource allocation um, system. Um, it's it's It can be horrendous. Um, and again, this is the only thing we found and we've used it. There's a bit, of more, bit more carving we've got to do on our end to get our sort of story correct. Yeah. This is the only story. This is the only solution we can see so far that actually allows everything. Well, there are a couple of competitive products out there, but it allows everything to be managed out of one box at a at a sort of sensible price as well. Yep. Um, so to be so, just to carry on there uh, from what Halpal is saying is that you know there's again I'm sure you've probably noticed this. I haven't left the screen. I can manage my full project. I can allocate time go all the way to from a PM approval, all sitting in one application. If I started looking at the things that I need to approve, you can see here, for example, that the data on the side starts changing as well. So as a project manager, when I start approving the, 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 the hours for the week, I can start tracking how far I am from a budget point of view and get all, you know, and get all, and get all that information uh, uh, um, uh, into the system. So once I approve the hours, you see, it takes those away. It says it, 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 it's dynamics. In other words, it's, it's, it's refreshed the screen. These are the last hour. These are the last hours that I need to approve. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you back to the project. And I know this is a very uh, 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 a high level overview that I've, that I've given you. But what you can then do from here is once I've created the project, I've allocated time to the project, I've approved the hours for the project and the resources, and the project <laughs> is running, um, at the end of the week, I can actually start invoicing directly from the, from the solution as well. Now here you can see there's some there's some uh, uh, um, that invoices that need to be created just from a demo point of view. I'm just going to change it to the end of the week, um, and from here we then go ahead and we start we 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 start invoicing. So what it really does at this stage, it generates an invoice that's templatized according to the uh, to uh, the the end user's requirements. Uh, so, for example, Myriad have got their 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 their, their letterhead uh, on. At this stage, you can see that everything's. Um, I still have the chance to review as a project manager. I still have the chance to review my invoice. Once I approve the invoice, okay, um, and I let me just save just to speed things up a bit. It generates an invoice number. And once that invoice number is generated, that actually gets gets uh, uh, transferred through to your general ledger in your, fin in your finance solution. You can have a preview of the solution. You can make sure that it's actually done. Okay, you can see what it looks like. Um, and it's as simple as that. Okay, um, and from here as well, you're also able to to, to able to invoice the the, the uh, or sorry send the emails directly to the the end user. So what I've done here really is just to show you this has been very much of of, of a manual process because I wanted to take you through the actual process of 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 the uh, of the projects. But a lot of this of these elements can be automated. So in other words, simplifying the the work processes for the end user and 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 and, and making your organizations a lot more efficient. So what I've really done um, before I hand over to Harpel is I've just shown you a quick overview of the landscape of the PSA product. I've shown you what all the capabilities and the, and the various uh, uh, components of the project, uh, which Harpel uses to manage his, his specific projects. Um, I've looked at the, re the, re the utilization sheet. So in other words, your, 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 to track your resources that you have within your organization, allocated some time to projects finally got those approved, 
and then actually send the invoice out to the client so we can start getting money into the organization. Um, so I think if, if anyone is, is, is interested in having a look at this, please reach out to Hapel um, for, for uh, a, a deeper dive into, into the product. So back to you, Hapel. Okay, thank you very much. So that, that was, again, in a nutshell, an alternative way of managing projects um, using um, so managing digital projects, I suppose, using a, a proper digital solution. So um, I probably didn't have the analogy there, but up until now, we as an organization, uh, not just us, but a lot of organizations actually, we talk to um, from a thought leadership perspective, we, we have been talking to um, larger consultancy companies who are managing, let's say, large digital sort of projects, but by, by use, by using manual processes. Um, this is the best thing we've found so far, and it works for us as an organization because we are sort of in bed with Microsoft like everybody else is now with Microsoft 365. So, um, you know, we would welcome a conversation even now if, if, if people want to sort of hear more. So, you know, happy to take sort of questions, comments now, or by all means, please reach out to me um, directly. Um, so my contact details are at Bone Tech. So um, I'm more than happy to, um, more than happy to take questions either now or later. I'm taking silence as being golden. Um, has anybody got any questions now they want to take up with us? Please do. If so, please take yourselves off mute. If not, thank you for your time. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and um, um, enjoy the rest of the week at Bowman Tech Week.